You know, I, uh, and by the way, welcome to Sunday. Uh, this is the Rich Lieberman Media Pulse. And um, I'm, uh, I'm dressed up in my wonderful all black because uh, I'm just that kind of a guy. Um, so, you know, I prepared a lot, but I haven't prepared a lot for what I'm about to, to say because, you know, you get more cynical as you get older. You know, I used to think that was a cliche, but it's, it's, <sighs> folks, I am so fucking disgusted. I'm, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm more, well, disgusted. I'm more pissed off that the state that we're in, you know, and you know, I, I've done a number of these, not nothing like this, but I've, I've, you know, sometimes I say to myself, you know, and I'm no, look, I'm no Boy Scout. You all know that. Even those of you who have defended me, have come to my aid, and you know who you are. And, and I really appreciate that. You don't know how much I appreciate. I've sunk my, literally my life into this project. Um, project. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's an evolution. And this is the fifth month, into the fifth month, I should say. I started this back in October of last year. And I really didn't know what I was going to do. I thought maybe I would be introspective. And, um, God, I hate these damn pop-ups. I am so sick of these fuckers. Excuse me, folks. Get so angry. And they know when you're doing a thing, right? They know when you're on the air. And they come across in, in any event. Um, so I, at first I was trying to become really, you know, critical with, with cohesive thinking and try to cover radio and television and newspapers and the Internet here. Right. And as I've delved more deeply, it sounds a little phonyish, philosophical, I'm, I've become more... <laughs> critical you know and and that's good and positive but mostly shitty it's mostly it's mostly critical and can you blame me for not being critical you owe me that you do philosophically speaking you know you don't owe me a damn thing but you know what i mean right look i don't claim to be on some sort of pedestal i have limitations like everybody else i don't claim to be as I said, a Boy Scout. I never have said. I'm disgusted. I call them scammers. And what, what drives me fucking batty about some of these people, not all of them, is the fact that they portray themselves. And these are media people. And I'll get to them in a second, because unlike them, I don't hide behind critical thought and downright, you know, anger. Somebody said the other day, as I pause a little bit, and go in another direction. Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? What should I be? I'm not angry, angry. I don't lose sleep over this bullshit that we have to preside over. I'm pissed off because it wasn't that long ago that we had really, really good people working here. You know, it's not the entire landscape. You know, we have so many professionals working in other in other areas and markets and all that. We have this shit in this market and frauds and scammers. Scammers. Because they put on this false bravado, you know, this family persona, some of them, and this this uh, cool image, some of them. They claim that they're that they think they're cool and they are philosophical and all that bullshit. They're none of the above. They're lucky they have some jerk who hired them and gave them the chance to become as best as they can, which is less than mediocre. And that's the best that they can become. Look at the Chronicle. The Chronicle. What a crock. The Chronicle. Yeah, I'm real disappointed that the Chronicle, the Chronicle doesn't credit me anymore. Fuck the Chronicle. 
Hurst, you ought to be ashamed of yourself every day. And I can't say each time more than enough. It gets worse. I haven't read the paper, the physical paper, almost a year now. I can't. You know, it's this thin, number one. It's a it's a joke. They don't even cover news anymore, although most newspapers are the same. You got to go online again to get news, actual news. The Sunday sports section is a joke. They don't cover sports news. It's like a magazine, as they call it. Yeah, magazine. Wonderful. Yeah. The, it's the New Yorker personified, only it's in the West Coast, my ass. Yeah. And the restaurant page, which used to be one of the best things to look at, at that shitty paper when they had Bauer, Michael Bauer, and now they've hired some other numb school, some woman who's got these philosophical leanings. Meanwhile, she can't write shit. I don't even know who she is. They interviewed her on one of those stupid stations that we have here, the few radio stations left in this decrepit radio market. In any event, the food page sucks. The restaurant reviews suck. I hate using the word suck. It's lazy, but it's apropos here. The Chronicle. The Chronicle. Even when Herb Cain was there, and Herb Cain was good. He, at least he was entertaining. At least they had decent columnists. Who is a columnist now for that paper? You know? Hearst, they got billions of dollars of revenue, which enables them to carry the Chronicle, to put out a paper, even though they're printing, what, five copies these days. But they're the shits. Television is the shits. I'm covering Michael Finney, who doesn't talk. And there's this code of silence around KGO television, ABC. I can't think of a more shitty, more awful, most mediocre television news station, and there's plenty here, than Channel 7. And Michael Finney, and like a moron, I'm trying to give this guy more weight than he deserves. You know, I don't give a shit if he's got the stupid voice and he sounds like he's in a, you know, some kind of a, a, a voice purgatory. Yeah. With the helium, ah, you know, the helium voice and all that. And I'm covering this guy. And everybody, oh, now they're all silent. Channel 7, all these morons that they have on Channel 7. And that includes you, Dan Ashley. I'm the only one who gives a shit about your contract situation. Why? Because I guess it's news. Disney won't re-up you. What am I supposed to do, Dano? Am I supposed to talk about your lovely hair and your wonderful singing voice and the fact that you want to be the anchor equivalent? Of Mick Jagger? Oh, my God. Channel 7. And you have Cron, which is back to being Cron again, by the way. And, oh, my God, so they have the CW network. We're supposed to take them more seriously. No. As long as you've got Daria Folsom. Daria Folsom is still on the air. Oh, my God. Are you desperate, Cron? Yeah. Daria, why don't you do more... Why don't you go swallow more bananas, Daria? That was a real wonderful stunt that you did only a couple of years back. Oh, a takeoff on the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Are we going to see that again, Daria? Disgusting. And all these reporters and anchors who go up and go down. And I'm going to tell you something, okay? Hey, Catherine Heenan, I like you. I think you at one point, you kind of, to me, you fit that kind of Sylvia Chase mode, you know, that senior kind of uh, repertoire and you had credibility and now with Pam Moore gone, you're the last of the Mohicans, you and and Vicky Liviakis and Vicky, you know, get off your high horse for God's sakes, you know, and Justine Waldman. Look, I guess Justine, it turns out you're really not that good. Otherwise they would have made you number one. Okay. Your husband's not that much better. Grant Lotus. My God, Grant. Grant, get a hold of yourself. You're bland. You're not vanilla. You're Melba Toast with an attitude, okay? You'd be lucky to have a number four gig in Dubuque, Iowa. Get off your high horse. And all you weather reporters and all these traffic stupid things that they do on Cron, it's disgusting. Like these goddamn pop-ups. Excuse me. 
I hate these things. KPIX. I got to give you credit, as I've said. CBS News Bay Area. It sounds really wonderful. Get better people. You know? Get better people. Julia Goodrich is fine. Okay? She's fine. But some of you, the rest of you, some of you, not filling the test. You're not filling the test. NBC Bay Area. Hmm. The chosen one. Look, Raj Mathai. You want to be the Indian Walter Cronkite. You're you're American and of Indian descent. Okay. Raj, when you look at the teleprompter and you reek of this holier than thou image, you come off as being disingenuous, Raj. You're a good guy. I've met you many a times. We haven't talked lately because I think you're pissed off because I was talking about your various rendezvous, nice rendezvous, with your one of your fellow colleagues there. What's her name? Uh, Wang, everybody Wang Chung tonight, you know, whatever is her name. I forgot. Um, um, Janelle, okay? So I talk about that, Raj. I'm not saying you're out there, you know, ripping off old people. You're not. But take away the aura, Raj, of this seriousness bullshit Okay, just read the teleprompter. Pretend that you're an anchor, okay? And don't give us this holier-than-thou shit. You're going to Paris in the summer, for God's sakes, to cover the Olympics. And by the way, that's good spending because, you know, we really aren't getting that much Olympics coverage from NBC. So NBC local, San Jose, has to send you to Paris. Geez, I wonder what's going to take place there. And then we have... KTVU, Channel 2, the gift that keeps on giving. I've got no notes, and I'm just getting started, folks. I'm cranky as all hell, and I'm being blunt because, for God's sakes, nobody else is here. What a piss-poor market that we have in the Bay Area. No wonder the people hate the media. No wonder they think you all are scammers, which most of you are. KTV, you get a grip. I hate using that phrase. It's cliche after cliche, but it fits here. Get a grip. You know, Heather Holmes, for God's sakes. You know, okay, so you're a hard worker. That doesn't make you wonderful. You could be a lazy ass and be great on the air, Heather. Okay. A lot of truck drivers in Fremont like you, I guess, Heather. So, oh my God, you're the next new newborn Leslie Stahl. Jesus Christ. And Alex Savage, I like you. You do a good job. Okay, you have a kind of a slick look, but at least you're presentable. Okay? Julie Hayner, for God's sakes, Julie, what has happened to you? You're walking all over Danville social clubs you're, I don't know, seeing or not seeing your husband. He's a millionaire and you're, you're just showing up to work when you want. And good. I have nothing against your son. Hell, I hope he becomes the next MVP, but he's not playing full-time anytime soon. And I don't give a shit if you use PEDs. Julie, Julie, you get a grip too. Okay, and Bill Martin. Oh my God. Can you mumble anymore, Bill? You're lucky that they keep you at the firm because they have nobody else to replace you, including good old Elvira herself, Roberta Gonzalez. Roberta, Roberta, another get a grip. For God's sake, you're not 25 anymore, or 35, or even 45. Look, I like to, at one point in my life, I liked to go out and have a few cocktails. But, Roberta, you got to stop doing it with the Emmys and all that stuff. Okay, you're a number two. Bill Martin hired you, basically, because he wanted protection. He wanted a couple of more years until they throw his ass out, too, like they did with Marky Banyas. But, KTVU, you're a joke. I haven't even mentioned all the shit that takes place there and the massive equipment failures and all this crap. Okay. And KQED. What? Let's do 50 more pledge breaks. For what? You've been promising for years and years and years to have a local nightly newscast. And what do you have? You have 27 
fucking pledge breaks. And if somebody sends $50, you give them a fucking coffee mug and some old masterpiece theater. Big deal. And I'm having to schlep here on my own and beg, borrow, and steal to get $5 for some of you who watch me and are entertained, or maybe if you're not entertained, if you're not informed, if you don't have some clarity on the bullshit that is the Bay Area media today. I'm just getting started. The Chronicle, SFist. Have, most of you folks don't read SFist, but in case a few of you that don't, the 20 people who read SFist, it's sfist.com. There's some local shitty aggregator, and they come off, right, as this kind of village voice, alternative, you know, everyday press internet you know, component. And all they do, all they do, they, do they credit or do they show some, I don't know, alternate sites? No. They aggregate towards television stations here and the Chronicle. Why? Because they want to get credit themselves. Yeah. They're owned by some company back east. There's a Gothamist, which is the, you know, the site for New York. How clever, by the way. Anyway, that's our local media. That's our fucking local media, television-wise. You know, I'm going to get to the scammers in a second. But can you believe, here we are, 2024, and this is the shit that we have. And I cover it. I know. I'm kind of hypocrite. I know, folks. That's why you need me. And, of course, I need you to function and to operate. I don't go off, folks, on bullshit artificial noise. Those of you who know me know that, most of you. Those of you that don't know me, I don't give a shit, but in a way I do, because I need you folks to keep me going. I'm not some holier-than-thou asshole. I don't pretend to be somebody that I'm not. I don't come on here with bullshit sports statistics and talk to people cross-screen on Zoom who claim to be some wonderful sports savant. I don't make up shit and pretend to be this holier-than-thou asshole vanity man, family man, like fucking Brian Murphy, that fuck-up. I'm angry now because these son-of-a-bitches get so much accolades because they're, they're not real. They're phonies. They put on an act. I'm every ounce, even the good rich, the bad rich, the indifferent rich, the angry rich. At least I can say with authority, you asshole Larry Beal, another fake. At least I could say I am the real deal. Not that you may want it or not want it. I am the real deal. I don't purport to be anything other than, as I've said, who I am for better or worse. And you know what? There are times when myself, I myself, get disgusted with my own Wayne to cover this shit. It damn right is hypocritical for me. But you know what? I'm kind of that check and balance thing that you guys need. I really mean that. I, I mean that. I look at this shit that surrounds us, right? How can we put up with this crap? And it's with us every fucking day. I'm not swearing, by the way, to swear for effect. I'm saying what's on my mind, and I'm trying to be halfway decent and productive and not yell and scream and rant and rave and to put on some kind of fake manufactured persona. And I'm not being holier than thou. I'm trying to be as real as possible. It is disgusting what we have to endure, endure here. Radio. What a disgusting. And now we have these fucking KGO retreads. Mark Thompson. Who talks like this and wears headphones. And he has on John Rothman. I like John Rothman. But I also am disgusted with him. And I'll get to that in a second. Fucking Mark Thompson. What's your real name, Mark? Do you constantly 
use your fake last name. What, are you ashamed of being Jewish? You know? I said to Larry King, my good friend, the late, great Larry King, Larry, what's the deal with Larry King? Oh, you know, Rich, they made me change my name because they thought I was too Jewish. You know, something to that effect. Yeah, his name was Larry Zeger. Zeiger. You know, and I'm not speaking ill. Larry's a great guy. He was a wonderful person. Supported me. Helped me. Motivated me. Guided me. A great, great guy. You know, I was a little annoyed that Larry went to Larry King. You know, I understand. Larry Zeiger. Okay, a little too Jewish. I got it. Wonderful. But at least Larry talked about it. Mo Thompson, who talks like this and wears headphones, has got the, you know, he got the real splashy, you know, the name and the background. And meanwhile, Mr. Bay Area boy. Oh, I'm a Bay Area guy. Yeah, yeah. Broadcasting from fucking LA, right? Yeah, Mark Thompson. And then we have Nikki Medora. Oh, aren't you sweet? Nikki. Yeah. Yeah. Block me and others on your Twitter as if I give a shit about you. I've never gone to you, Mickey, Sticky, whatever the fuck your name is. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you substitute every now and then on KCBS? Because you know what, Nick, Mick, Stick, whatever. Yeah. You're real wonderful. Sometimes when I look at you, Mickey, Sticky, whatever the fuck. Yeah. I think of you as Helen Thomas. You're quite the journalist, for God's sakes. Yeah, tell us more about your mocha adventures and taking your kids to school. Boy, that's original, Nikki Maduro. My God, KCBS. Yeah, put her on. Why don't you put 20 other people on? The, the as I call it, the whack-a-mole station, among all the other shit, KCBS. Scammers, scammers. You want a good comedy act, folks? You want to laugh your ass off? Put on KCBS every morning, okay? Or in the afternoon. Or if you really want a laugh a palooza, I just made that up. Turn on KCBS like in the middle of the night, like on a Sunday. Oh my God. You'll have just multiple giggles, right? These fucking sports guys that they have. One of them sounds like Elmer Fudd, you know, and Kermit the Frog during the morning, during the week, who have no clue what the fucking Bay Area landscape is like. Again, People that mispronounce names of cities. We got one moron on the weekend who I incorrectly identified the name of the Cal coach, whoever he or she is. Routine mistakes. Hey, I make mistakes. But you know what? I correctly, correctly and quickly apologize for mistakes, folks. Okay? I'm a one-man band. But, but enough of that for a second. Yeah, KCBS. You know what? I'm I'm not supposed to be the dead horse. It's not a dead horse. It's a fucking dead corpse horse, whatever. They get away with this shit. And they giggle and they laugh. Then we have the two robotic morons in the morning, Eric Thomas. Oh, God. Yeah, he's a wonderful morning personality. When I hear Eric Thomas in the morning... I automatically get registered and I get full of, of oh my God, determination. Yeah, that's a wall, a wallop of energy there, Eric Thomas. He'd be more apt to be on KQED at 3 a.m. on a Sunday. And it would be barely tolerable there, Eric Thomas. And Margie Schaefer, I like you. You don't belong in the morning. Not that you can't be good. You're good. You're not a morning pre Hell, you don't even talk to Thomas. He doesn't talk to you. You're robots. That's your morning drive, KCBS. And you get away with it because you have no competition. I get it. The few people who listen to radio, the schmucks like me, I have it on now pretty much as background noise. But KCBS. And then the afternoon, Brett. Hi, I'm Brett Burkhardt. You know, I used to preach in the newsroom at KGO, where I was used to be a retread, about that news people shouldn't do ads. You know, that's the CBS News policy many years ago. Wow. Yeah, Brett. Now, meanwhile, you're doing, you're become a whore. You're doing every ad there is. Good for you. You need the money. You got to feed the family, right? Brett Burkhart in the afternoon. I'd rather have a root canal and a colonoscopy check. Listen to that schmuck. 
Patty rising. Oh, Patty right. Yeah, you're very sanctimonious, Patty. Yeah, I'm supposed to sit back and listen to your dribble. And by the way, Patty, get a grip on yourself, too, with the interviews that you do, you and the moron, Brett Burkhart. Yeah, you're going to cut people off because you don't like certain people's accents, right? Sometimes they're more interesting than you guys. So you get a grip, Patty Rising. Yeah. Why don't we do, again, KCBS. I love the commercials. You know why? Because it takes away your shit. Even though I have you on in the background and regard you as elevator music and fucking, you know, Pensacola. God, you are awful scammers. The sports and these overnight traffic people. Yeah, Carolyn Burns. That Carolyn Burns. That moronic voice. That <clears throat> that Santa Clara area. That Oakland area. How about giving us a fucking traffic report at the scene of the crime, the accident? That area? Is that another wondrous uh, uh, wheel of assignment by one, your boss? What's his name? Ken, not Ken. What, what's the guy? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Bastida. Not Ken Bastida. Somebody named Bastida with no relation to Ken, the former Channel 5 anchor. God. Oh, KMBR. You guys say to me, Rich, why do you talk about KMBR so much? Why do you talk about KC? What else is there to talk about? And that's why radio is dying. KSFO. They don't exist. KFRC. It's the religious station. Nobody gives a shit about that. They got a dead guy on there still talking. He's dead. KNBR and Brian Murphy in the morning with his Dorfus, Doofus, whatever the fuck his name is. Murph and Marcus, another M&M. Yeah, Murphy. Brian Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, has his nose, as I've said repeatedly, up Larry Bear, who fronts the Giants. I'm not an anti-Giants guy. You know, I don't follow the A's anymore because they're a joke. And they're on their way to Sacramento or Vegas or Moscow, where the fuck they're going to go. So fuck them. Giants, I watch. I watch. I'm not into baseball. It's baseball, but whatever. But Brian Murphy is an artificial asshole. He is, he is beholden to every fucking Giants affiliate and advertiser. He is beyond corporate shill. He lies. He makes himself out to be some fucking wholesome family guy. Fuck that. It's bullshit. It's total bullshit with his fake giggle and his fake retrospectives with his little moron partner in the morning who they fired the other guy to bring this cheap guy in. This guy who likes to talk about his parade around San Francisco and if he can get laid every now and then. Dorfus. Marcus, whatever the hell his name is, who talks artificially because I'm just going to talk like this because, hey, I can talk like this. God damn it. Makes me want to yearn for Mike and or Frank and Mike, even though I hated Frank and Mike off the air. Loved them off the air. Didn't really care for them on the air, but at least they had style and they had some degree of professionalism and not didn't pretend to be somebody other than who they were as opposed to Brian, asshole, corporate Mr. Murphy. Go play golf with the fucking program director, Mr. <laughs> yeah. I do that. Folks, I am doing and mimicking somebody who just does that every fucking minute. The so-called program director, Copes, Copy Dopes, Copalopes, Cope, 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 don't. God forbid, call me Adam Copeland. She's Adam. I wonder how you got to that station. Was it dad? And I don't give a shit, Adam, if your dad badmouths me. You know what? At least I have the balls, Adam, Kobe Copes, to say shit and not hide like your dad says shit about me. I kind of find it amusing, rather original, that he would say shit about me behind my back. And you too, yet all five free inches of you, Adam, Kopi Copes, Brian Murphy, give me a break. And Greg Papa, I know Greg Papa, not well, I know him. And I've, I've caused a friendship with Greg Papa. 
Craig's another phony. You know, Greg, you are. Look, folks, I don't claim to be some, again, Moses. I'm not Mother Teresa as a man. You know, look, I, I try to slap flies in the house and kill them. And sometimes, if I'm lucky, tear their wings off because they're flies. I am who I am. But I don't claim to be somebody else. I have limitations. I do. But I'm not fucking Greg Papa. Yeah, Greg, why don't you go to the Gotham Club again, Greg? Does that make you feel like you're special? You know, do you have to always go on airplanes and ask people what they think of your stupid ass, overdone, over-the-top bullshit 49ers touchdown call? That did them really well, Greg. Every time you and the moron who you work with, John Lund, every time you guys predict a Market Street parade for the 49ers, guess what? They lose. And I'm a Niners fan now. My other fucking ex-Oakland team, which moved to L.A. and then again back to Oakland and now Vegas. So I don't root for them anymore. I actually like to see the 49ers win. But every time, Greg... You, you talk as if, Greg, you play for the 49. We and we and we. And, you know, Greg, I have a lot of bad things in my life. I'm dealing with issues, but I'm open about them. I don't go to the Gotham Club and walk around girls half my age and put make it a point to show my NFC championship ring. That's what you're reduced to, Greg. Pop. With your bullshit also. You're kind of like a semi Brian Murphy, you know, and don't kiss Marty Lurie's ass and show up at the Gotham Club and, 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 and original Joe's and take photos, Greg, with your stupid giggle too. <laughs> Weird. What is it at KMBR? Is it in the air? Is it in the water that everybody giggles? Greg Papa, John Lund, and you, how many program directors? Have you worked for John Lund? You make it sound like it's a badge of honor. Every other time you say, like you said to Papa, what does that show? That you have no balls? That you're beholden to Papa? What is it? Are you that worried and insecure about your own job? That you have to kiss Papa's ass? And that Papa has to every five seconds say, John, to you on KNBR, John and John. Greg, are you talking... To John, or are you talking to the Bay Area audience? Oh, that's right, Greg. You don't like taking calls. You don't like talking to the audience out there, those folks that send me emails and ask me questions like, why doesn't he talk on the air? Why don't they take calls? Well, they take a few calls now because they have nothing else to do, and callers are good, even if Papa doesn't like callers. Because what? What are you afraid that they might – take you out to task for going on airplanes and walking up to flight attendants and folks and saying or asking what they think of your assholish, over-the-top, screaming, ranting, less-than-Bill King touchdown call? Really, Greg? This is what you're reduced to? Yeah, you act like you've been with the 49ers for, like, decades. This is your fifth year. You're entering your sixth year. And don't put down the the A's before they got kidnapped by this asshole John Fisher. Greg, you used to be the voice of Oakland. You did the A's. And you did the Raiders. And you did the Warriors. And now that you're on the suck-up bullshit station, Knibber, now you're going to kiss the asses of Larry Bear and the Giants of course, you got to kiss the ass of the 49ers. You work there. They sign your check, at least most of it, right? But with your stupid giggle and your over-the-top touch, I get, I, I get off that. I'm just talking about you as a person, Greg. And I don't give a shit if you've been married four times or five times or that you got your son a job at KNBR, Derek, the great producer of the Moron Show from 2 to 6. With Tolbert. Tolbert, what are you doing too, Tolbert? You're going to talk about Arizona every fucking five minutes? Well, I guess that's better than talking about beer. People tune in to a sports talk show to listen to subjects regarding 
Get this. Sports. <clears throat> you could be funny. You could be original. You can attempt a foray into worldliness and off sports topics every now and then. That's great. But do it with some style. We don't give a shit, Tom Tolbert, about Arizona. The only people that give a shit are you and other sports-minded people who went to Arizona. Tommy. Tommy. And then again, back to your other co-host, Mr. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder how you got that job. The extra five cents they pay you per month to be the program. What a joke. Yeah, the program director. As I've said repeatedly. Yeah, go up to Papa, program director, Kopi Copes. Tell him that he should change the style here and there. Or go to Tolbert and say, Tom, you know what? You're starting to be like Ralph Barbier. You're taking a little too much time off. I'd like you to show up at the office every day. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to say that. Or even your stupid buddy Murph, Smurf, that you play golf with. What? Trying to be a little bit more El White, Mr. Kopi Copes, white boy kind of ish, kind of a thing. Yeah. Hmm. Wonder where that came from. I am so disgusted. I can't believe these are these are so big time scammers, folks. They are scammers, you know, and I'm going to call them out. I called out Marty Lurie the other day. I love Marty Lurie. Wrote many things about him when I was writing more. Said some really good things about Marty. Chicken soup radio, all that. But Marty... When you have on Schmendricks like Papa and take pictures with his stupid looks and his dumb tennis shoes and his false bravado because he's not anything what he really is, Marty. And when you have on Carmen Pugh, Q, whatever the fuck her name is, she doesn't belong on the airwaves. Sorry, Carmen. You might be a great person. You might give a lot of money to charity. You're not supposed to be near a microphone it is disgusting it is almost borderline criminal that's how bad you are and the assorted other other female schmendrick people that marty you have on sorry can't take it can't deal with that turned it off so i'm gonna call you out marty too okay and enough already with we we know the 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 uh, uh original joe's it's a great hamburger. I went over there and drove, and I paid for it, Marty. I paid for the hamburger. The fact that you got a deal and they give you free food, God bless you. That's wonderful. I don't hear about have to hear about the fucking cheesecake every five seconds. Or the guy up in Pismo Beach with the motel or hotel that does advertising with you, God bless him. He's giving you money. He's spending money. Wonderful. That's why I don't take ads. I don't out there... Hit up Alice. People come to me, and that would be quite a chore. But I don't talk about their fucking seafood and how great it is. And by the way, Marty, the best seafood was at Spangers in Berkeley. You know that, okay? So just stick with that. Do your show. Talk to Jenkins, even though he's kind of a pain in the ass lately. Bruce Jenkins, yeah. I'm going to bow before you. But Bruce, at least you're not Tim Asshole Kawakami. And that fake, oh, God, I was on Jeopardy. Well, that must make me an expert. Fuck Andrew Baggerly. What a scam you are. You know, you want to take shots at me, asshole? You come to me. You know where to find me, apparently. I don't hide behind computers, Baggerly, and take shots at people like you do. And your little eon, little proxies interns or bullshit folks that you know i don't give a shit baggerly about your personal life that's up to you i don't go after people's personal life unless they fuck with me that's a different story you're gonna take a shot at me baggerly you know where to find me baggerly mr jeopardy oh god geez he's such a maverick he cleaned up on jeopardy well that must make him a real sports aficionado a real expert you're part of the Booster Club, Baggerly, you and Susan Slusser, or excuse me, as Papa would call her, Suze. Hey, Suze. Do you know how annoying that is? 
not to mention condescending and patronizing, sues. Why don't you criticize Greg Papa, sues? Oh, wait a minute, you did. And yet he continues to refer to you as sues, and you put up with it. Well, I guess the fact that you're the charter member and president of the Giants Booster Club, maybe you're not as sensitive as I thought you were. Maybe you're too busy being a cheerleader. Maybe instead of, oh, I don't know, doing an introspective of how the Giants are performing. What have you covered now? That, what, this is your third year, Suze? Could you be a little bit more analytical, Suze, and less talkative about the fact that you love Bowmel? We know you love Bowmel. Maybe not just Bowmel himself, but a tentacle of Bowmel, if you know what I mean. A little bit more analysis, a little bit more reflections and coverage of a team. Don't be like you're on the back of the bus, Suze, Slusser. You know, I don't fawn over just because of the fact that you happen to be a woman, Suze. I actually would like to read some actual coverage, some analytical stuff about how they're performing, not how wonderful uh, the guy, the new guy at third base. Chapman looks, not how lovely and excited you were over Kapler. That did him well. You can be a little bit more, oh, I don't know, objective. Maybe actually do your job and not be a charter member of the Booster Club, Sues. My God, it's disgusting. Look, I know it's sports. Sports is just kind of a lot of you've commented. You tell me, don't talk about sports media. I'm not talking about sports media again. What do we have left here? Kawakami, what a joke you are! Yeah, you know what? Kawakami, block this, you joke. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna suck up and <laughs> Joe Lacob, that'll get me tremendous insight. Baggerly. Makes me want to go out and spend two cents on the athletic. Yeah, no wonder the New York Times is going broke again to buy the athletic. Just wonderful people, especially here. God almighty. Oy, 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 oy. Who have I left out? I hate everybody. I do. I do. Hey, look, sometimes I even hate myself, but that's another story. But at least I'm there. I'm here. I'm up front. I don't hide behind computers. If I take shots at people, right? I'm up at the, the masthead. There's my name. Here's my lovely face in my palatial studios with the monitor in the background. Did you like the KTSF? Yeah. Okay. I don't hide. And you know what? I'm getting more and more people coming here because you know what some of you have told me again you like the background you like the fact that if I can do this you can do this dare I say I identify with a lot of you because you understand that a lot of these people are not these fucking you know stars they're scammers they're fake they act one way some of them are a little original but not all of them most of them are not they put on this this kind of subterfuge personality case. And I don't give a shit, a shit about going 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 8 minutes, 20 minutes. You love watching me. A lot of you do. Sometimes you don't, and that's great. Because we're not always perfect. We're not even close to being perfect. But we, I'm using myself in the third person. I give you my best take. OK, you do need me and I do need you, because if I don't put a check on these motherfuckers, sorry for my I don't get paid on clicks. I'm not beholden to advertisers. Occasionally I go. I go off and I swear. OK, redact the mother remark. Sorry about that. Um, look, I ask you. I ask you I'm trying to think how I can word this. I am motivated by nobody. I say what's on my mind, sometimes at my own detriment. I call these assholes out because they have to be called out. 
I know these people and I'm not proud of it. Some of them I know very well. Some of them I've lost friendships with and I'll lose more. I don't give a shit. It's not like I'm on some kind of a journey to expose the truth. <clears throat> There's only one truth. I've said it a million times. It's the truth, not your truth or my truth, the truth. But I had to call these mothers out. I keep getting introversed and wanting to say the MF word. I'm not going to do that because, again, I don't do artificial manufactured crap like Brian Murphy. I say what's on my mind. I do it with conviction. And I really, frankly, I'm cranky. Don't give a shit about whether or not you like it or not. If you don't like it, you don't have to come here. I don't mean to be blunt, but I'm being blunt. If you love it, great. If you're in the middle, which I, you're either going to love this or like this, there's nobody in the middle. You know, I've lost some of you. I've lost a few subscribers. I like the people that come on. You know, I used to give you money, Rich. I used to donate because I liked your product and I like, but now I'm not going to. Goodbye. Get lost. If you truly don't like me and you've stopped contributing, fine. What the fuck am I supposed to do? What do you want me to say? Oh, I'm... I don't work that way, folks. I don't. I'm going to either live here or die here, but I'm going to do it on my terms. If you want to see me, and boy, don't I look great today again? That's great. I love the people who talk to me via email or whatever. Rich, I don't always agree with you, but you're entertaining. That's great. Or maybe I'm not entertaining. I don't really know at this point. I'm giving you the best that I've got, and I'm calling out these assholes because they need to be called out because they are assholes, and they are fake, and they are, yes, scammers. I call them scammers. You know, I'm not a Trump guy. Didn't vote for him, won't. I don't know I'm not if I'm going to vote for Biden, but I sure as hell am not voting for Trump. You know, which, by the way, I get a, a lot of things I agree with him on, but I don't like the messenger. But anyway, the fake media crowd, I used to think that every other word, fake media, fake media, every other time. Now I know why people are so fucking angry and fed up. That's an area to which Trump seizes on. Because the media people, they, they just, again, not all of them, some of them. It's not just here, but here, I'm only commenting here because it's the only people I know. I know some national people, but that's not, this is not the time and the place to go talk about them because they don't affect you guys as much as the local assholes do. You know, the reason why I resonate lately with more and more people is because more and more people are not agreeing with me. That's not my deal. That's not how I roll. They agree with me on the fundamental aspects of just how fucked up this market, this San Francisco Bay Area alleged cosmopolitan area has become such a wasteland of you fakes and oh, former friends who run and hide and are cowards. You know who you are, too. I know who you are. And you know what? I am no day at the beach. I am one big pain in the ass myself. But I don't deviate from who I am. I don't hide and cower. You know? I'm going to have great people on and even not great people on to interview. And even if they don't come on after watching my show... I'm going to be just fine. I don't need people to interview. I can interview. Those of you who have watched me interview, never done this on TV before, but now I know how to do it. I'm not going to kiss ass. I'm going to try to be more receptive and not interrupt as much. Why do I interrupt? I'm impatient. I am totally impatient. But again, that's me. I have flaws. Breaking news. Rich has flaws. Damon Bruce and Larry Kruger. I'm pumped by this. Larry Kruger. Again, scammers, phonies, phony people. Matt Mayoko. Yeah, you're a real insider, Matt. Where's your favorite sandwich place in Walnut Creek? That's insight. 49ers insights? No, we got to go to ESPN, Reed, and uh, 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 Schefter. 
or Ian Rappaport. None of you 49ers insiders break anything. You have about as much insight as a kumquat in hell. You too, Giants insider. What the hell do you inside? What? Your press credential, which gets you in the press box and fawn over John Miller? Yeah, wonderful. John Miller, 50 years. Wonderful, John. I think you should talk about yourself more often lately because what the hell? The game is secondary and Dave Fleming. Oh, my God. How overrated you are, Mr. Corporate. Dave Fleming, I think I'll talk like this because I'm just an analytical white guy who went to Stanford. I'm going to mention that 12 times. Hey, guess what, Dave? I think you're going to the Masters. Nick. Congratulations. Time for some fill-ins. Joe Rizzo, my God, Dave Fleming, John Miller, great, Hall of Fame announcer, you are, just enough, where the cap again, the Giants cap, oh God, God almighty, did Bill King wear caps, did Lon Simmons wear caps, Bob Fitzgerald, hey Rudy, breaking news, you suck too. You've always sucked. You got corporate on your side too, Rudy, Bobby Fitz, because you just can't be vanilla enough and more ass kissing to Joe Lacob and Steph Curry. The only reason why you got a job, Bobby Fitz, Rudy, another travesty. Yeah. Ass kisser. Yeah. Wonderful. I got the Olympus because I know how to kiss ass to NBC execs and they bought it. Good salesman. Wonderful. All right, folks. Um, I've had it. I'm cranky. I need more water. And I'm going to take a break. I have a great, great day. Oh, contribute. Damn it. To 415 Media. Rich Lieberman. You know how to do it. <laughs> 